are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to our talks. I'm your host, Joanne Bauer, and this is the show where we talk to artists about their artwork and about the process of creativity. I'm very happy today to have three guests with me, and the focus of our show today will be about Open Studio Hartford, which is coming up again and which is celebrating its 25th anniversary. So all three artists who are here today will be participating in Open Studio, Studio Hartford. And before I introduce them, I actually want to make sure to give out the website. First thing that uh, you will want to know, this is www.openstudiohartford, just uh, one word across, the three words as one, dot com. And the event coordinator again this year is Cynthia Boulong. Now Cynthia was quite involved even back at the very beginning is my understanding. This is, as I think I said, the 25th anniversary. The, um, the very first time that they pulled this together was in 1989. Just a handful of artists back then. It has continued to grow, as we know. So this year there will be over 300 artists in I believe at least 20 venues around the city of Hartford and that's happening in November so I do want to identify a couple of the key dates in November and also to stress that this is free it's a citywide event it's supported by the Greater Hartford Arts Council and also supported by the city of Hartford and the main thing is that we want people to come out to these venues and to buy art. It's placed in November, a perfect time to pur make purchases for your holiday um, gift giving. Now, the, the, first, the key, first key date that we need to know is November 6th, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a Thursday evening from 6 to 8. The kickoff reception will happen down at Artspace Hartford 555 Asylum Street. The group show where you'll, you can see a piece, one piece, I believe it's one piece of art per person in the art space exhibit. That will go on from the kickoff November 6th until November 30th, so roughly the whole month of November. A um, weekend that I've been part of for the past two years is November 8 and 9. That's the Performance Art Weekend, which is very cool. It's poetry, music, and dance inspired by visual art. So that's, that's a very exciting thing that we have talked about on the show before, and maybe next month we'll have one of the um, musicians or dancers or who knows, a poet. The main open studio weekend is going to happen November 15th and 16th, and that would be a Saturday and a Sunday from 11 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. And of the 20 venues, the main venues, of course, that have been part of the show for many, many years would be Art Space Hartford, which we mentioned, that's at 555. That's a key place. That's at 555 Asylum Street. Arbor Arts Center, the complex where Real Artways is. Um, Colt Gateway 
is involved again, which is wonderful. The Connecticut Historical Society is another great spot where you can see many artists. Union Station, which is the train station in Hartford, will also have many, many artists. And then we do have one location, at least one that I know of, that will be in West Hartford. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So now, let me introduce my guests. My first guest here is William Bill Kluba, and he has, oh my goodness, been involved with the arts for a long, long time. So we're going to talk more about your art and your book and your whole history. Next to him is Monica Havick, he Hevrick. Sorry, okay. I knew that practicing these names would <laughs> demand more of me than I gave it. And Monica is a potter, mm -hmm. and she's going to be at the Connecticut Historical Society again with mm -hmm. uh, open studio. And next to her is Sarah Palucci, mm -hmm. who is an artist living at Artspace Hartford. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be opening up her home studio on that during that month of, of November. Bill, let's start with you. You've brought some of your art, and my goodness, tell me about your career. I know you're at Tunxis, and you're a program director at mm -hmm. Tunxis, right? Tell us just yes, a little I, bit. I've been out to Tunxis for almost 35 years. Oh. Um, when I started, it was like a one-room schoolhouse, and now uh, I have approximately 26 adjuncts, and there's four full-time. We have a beautiful gallery, which I'm the director of, with new exhibitions every month. But the, uh, the program is awesome. And a lot of our students go on to University of Hartford, um, Philadelphia College of Art, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, RISD, you name it, and they get in. Mm -hmm. So we have a very high power program and great faculty. And I was thinking about how you coordinate, uh, as you said, a gallery show per month. That seems that that in itself would keep you busy. How do you, how do you juggle all of these well, balls? Well, um, because I do the, the gallery, uh, I, do, I teach one less course. So yes. um, it, the time works in very well, but it's so exciting because I do artists from New York, I do local artists, and I, right now we have a, a show of a woman who graduated in our program, graduated from the University of Hartford, and is now going on to the Philadelphia College of Art in uh, graduate studies. Oh, excellent. So is it one-person show? It's a one-person show, mm -hmm. and I do about three of those a year mm -hmm. of graduates. Excellent. And it's a really, it's a great way to get their feet wet. Now, one thing you have in your hands here would be your book, published mm -hmm. a few years ago, No, it's published this year. This uh, year? April of 2014. Excellent. Yes. And do you want to hold that up for sure. the camera and tell us sure. a little bit um, about the title? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called Where Does Art Come From? How to Find Inspiration and Ideas. And the genesis of this book came from my years of teaching and my years of making art. It's, a, it's kind of, it's interwoven with personal statements of my process, how I arrived at certain things. For instance, there's a whole chapter on intuition because intuition is a big part of an artist's life. There's a chapter on fear, and I've noticed through the years that students have sometimes problems with working with work because they're afraid of it. They think it's precious. And this gives, mm. gives you ways to overcome that and work around it because it could be an inhibition. And I do, as you're describing that, I can <clears throat> think of my own experience in, when I was first doing figure, figure drawing over at the University of Hartford. And I, I don't know exactly if I thought that my piece was precious, but I know that each line, you want each line to count, right, when you're doing figure drawing. And then, oh my gosh, it was so painful. It was so painful. Well, we wanted it to be perfect. And and we, we want it to be perfect, and yes. That in itself comes <laughs> from past history that we've been given that we want to perform. Right. And I feel like the, lab the classroom is a laboratory. It's not, it, it's a place where you can experiment freely. Right. It should be. And that you should let some of those inhibitions go and really try things yeah. and not expect the results. Because I'm just curious because I know, Monica, you are a fairly recent grad from mm -hmm. Central. Um, how did you find art classes? I, I, the reason I'm so curious is that back in the day, and we're talking decades ago when I was studying art, um, 
I didn't feel that I got encouragement. I felt that I didn't get many comments at all, and I'm hoping that something <coughs> is different. So well, just a little bit about your experience. For mine, like uh, I just recently graduated from Central, and we had a great like ceramics program, and everybody was basically like, a few of our students were from like ceramics one, and then we took all the classes all the way up. So we all kind of like grew together, and we're like Excellent. feedback and whatnot. And then, I mean, Vicente, he was a big part of it. It was always like, okay, well, here's your, here's your problem. Let's try to solve it this way. Let's add something else you didn't try or try a different technique. So, I mean, it was great. Like my motivation basically comes from like, I'll finish one idea and then just move on to the next. Cause it'll just like, this one gave me an idea of the next one and this one inspired the next one. And then it's just like, you just keep going. So, I mean, mine was more like, I just want to keep going, you know, like you said, no, have no fear and keep trying all these things that you didn't try and you can't expect it always to succeed. And that's how you're going to learn from your mistakes and whatnot. One she thing that a key point, and, right. and that's that when you said you go from one thing to the next, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, while you're working on a piece, a seed for a new piece will come along. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the forms will start to shrink and other ones will come in. And then by the time you've finished a series, maybe 10, 20 pieces, they look very different from when you started. Yes. Interesting. If you're paying attention. Yes. And also, I like that she was talking about the group experience or mm -hmm. the, the supportive group yeah. that, that evolved. Like and the critiques were really where you were able to like know what you're thinking versus the other person. Because say we all had the same assignment. Okay, you need to build something like okay a dinner set you know everybody's dinner set looked unique you know like this one it looked like barnacles this one looked like it belonged in like egypt or whatever you know like everybody had their own styles and then like we just feed off each other you know so it's really great because it's like you have the same assignment in like 10 different ways you know so that's very cool because I, in my experience it felt that was part of it that i didn't like it felt so isolated and and lonely so back to you bill for a moment this, this is current work. Yes, this, this is all from 2013 and 14. What would you, can you tell us a little bit about yes. where art, your art comes yeah, from, th the inspiration? This particular body of work, uh, I was very interested in presenting work that was unidentifiable, but very attractive and accessible. And a lot of it is based on the relationship from my internal self and the external world. And this is a bridge for me. Um, I've been a long time meditator, so some of this uh, works from that point of view. Um, I, I get feelings and things come up in meditation that are indescribable, so I like to transfer that energy into the work. I without love your color. Judging it. The color palettes that you're working yeah, with. Yeah, this is a, this color palette, this whole body is a very different color palette than what I was working with before. I and I like to shift color palettes. And, but I don't force it. If, uh -huh. if it's like I'm working with a group of colors, they kind of, I put the first mark down and then it tells me what to do. Right. And certainly if you're a meditator, you're open to inspiration too. Absolutely. And, and what I like, what's interesting to me is you said not recognizable and yet there is something that the eye and the brain says, oh, I've seen that. I've seen that before. So The famous artist Gerhard Richter said, and he's still alive, he's one of the best painters alive today. He said that, and he's, he does abstract, and he also does representational work, but he said even in his own abstract work, he starts to see things in it. Yes. And he said it's the human experience where we, where we start to p put things into the work. We say, I want to make this into this. And I find things in my own work after the fact. Yes, I can, I can certainly see that. And now, I want to move on, Monica, because I think that some of your pieces make total sense to me, <laughs> along with, with Bill's. I mean, I'm looking at colors and I'm looking at shapes. Tell me a little bit about what you've brought into the studio today. Well, what I, I brought a little bit of everything that I like, have been working on, on to like, currently and into the future. So basically like this is where it started off like I just started taking <clears throat> random pieces and then just putting them together it didn't really make sense but just wanted to stack them and see how far I could push balance and then make something really interesting like show the insides of the pots the outsides and then like in between and all these negative and positive shapes take a form of their own so I brought that one to show you what I was working on and then turning into more like what this is right here it's like three pieces stacked up really pushing gravity and it's 
Like, it, they were all fired separately, so they literally are just balancing, and they're supposed to look like they're supposed to tip over. So really pushed it, <laughs> right. pushed it to the limits of, like, what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like it's falling or, you know, like you have to double take to really recognize what you're seeing because you're seeing pots, but then you're like, what? wait, like, are they standing? Are they, like, are they together? You know, so that's more of what I'm working on now, like pushing more into, like, just really pushing with gravity and seeing how far I can go. And then the last piece at the very end is um, like just a tiny one, which is where um, I started making like this uh, spiral or horizontal manipulation. And I brought that into like pieces through like just making them look like it's trying to capture like a point in time, like as if it's going to like explode or something, you know, oh, like, oh. or it's like coming out. Like I made a series of those in mm -hmm. like um, part of it, like some of them were like wedding vases. Um, some of them were like just um, candle holders or, you know, things like that. And now I'm working toward building another series, but now Raku firing them instead of high fire. So all sorts of different techniques and just basically moving this technique into that one. So I have multiple pieces and then putting that design onto it to make it even more complex. So that's that's what's next. Now, <laughs> this one looks to me to be functional. Yeah. Well, are these, would you consider these functional or, or mm, not? Or no. should we not use that word at all? Well, you, I mean, you can like, um, one of like the wedding vases, the lady that actually asked me to make her custom ones, she is going to use them for like pussy willows. So they're like just dry mm -hmm. plants. So she could mm -hmm. use them for that day. But like you, if you put water in there, you're not going to hold much. You know yes, what I mean? I so see, technically, right. no, they're not functional, but I have had people come up to me and be like, okay, well, what if I grow something? Will it grow through it? And it's like, <laughs> absolutely, give it All a right. try. You know, like, you got your own spin on it. So, like, I don't now, know. Now, let's come back to this piece for a moment. I saw you place it, and yet I wasn't following sure. all the way so you're you're saying that each those three are separate pieces that yep. are just balancing in front of us right now yep. and last year i was at, also <laughs> exhibiting at the connecticut historical yep. society as you were for open studio hartford and you had a really tall piece that attracted a lot of attention. Are you going to have that piece in the show again? Not that one specifically, but I do have the tiki one that I brought to Impact Fest that it, it's just as tall. But this time, like, little kids have run up to it and hugged it, and it's safe. So it's, like, good. <laughs> it, just, it attracts a lot of attention, like you said. But this time, it's not like, oh, no, it's going to fall. So... Because of exactly what you've been describing, yep. how you push the edge and you work with balance and yep. you try to make the appearance of something falling over, right? And so that's mm -hmm. part of the appeal. I would think that sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I failed at a lot of pieces, but I mean, the success is like epic. So, Right. And what's interesting to me is this. You say you failed at a lot of pieces, but... I sense that <coughs> these failures don't mean like big failures to you well, because yeah, you move on to the, well, you, learn you learn something. From something. And you, yeah, right. you learn from all of these and then you're like, okay, this didn't work. So now this made me think of this and now I have a new technique. Like I made one after the big, big tall one at um, Open Studios, I made one with black pipe and then I measured the, like those uh, pieces and they all slid onto there. So you could shake that one and it's good, you know, it's not moving anywhere. And then that one's easily transportable too. So it's like you take it apart and then you just put it back together. But this one, like I didn't use any black pipe or anything. It's just like fittings, kind of like giant Legos, you know, like it's like <laughs> the, the sense of like, you know, how a lid fits on a jar. It's the right. same technique, you know, add another stunt and then let it sit inside one piece. So, right. And so when you are pushing boundaries, it, it seems to me you, you have to come up against that wall of tipping over into <laughs> failure yes. where something isn't working. Because if you're pushing, if you're really pushing, you're going to hit that place. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise stay back and play safe and mm -hmm. you won't get pieces that, that are nearly as exciting or creative. Mm -hmm. So um, what else could you, would you like to tell us today about any of, of the work that, that you brought? This one, this one was one of your earlier pieces. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where did you start with that notion of putting together what looked to be... Um, what it is now. <laughs> what looked to be, right, exactly. <laughs> like, well, where do as you, if you had, As if you had um, archaeologically uncovered 
pots and yeah. sort of glued them together. Well, what, what it started with, it was like take one piece and then I cut that piece up and then put that piece together. And I like restricted it to a whole semester of just one piece and then mixing with that. And then I brought the idea of two pieces and then I brought the ideas of you know, like a piece of it. So like each piece has like a neck. So then I took the necks of pieces and put them together. But then I moved on to taking multiple pieces because one or two is just not exciting enough. And then now <laughs> you, this one was 10. So then it was just like, okay, oh what else gosh, can I do? 10. Yeah. So 10 Excellent. inside out flipped up and all that stuff. But now <clears throat> what I'm working with is taking those pieces and more organizing the larger picture you know so like i made a piece that was shaped like a vase or made of little pieces so uh -huh. stuff like that you uh -huh. know like moving into like a spiral or something like that that's what i'm working on next when you talked uh, about negative and positive space mm -hmm. could you maybe explain that a little bit further for our audience using using your pots here well like for for um for that one i i could say basically like you know how it crevices in like it Basically, like, I want you to focus on the overall shape, kind of like when you take, like, a photograph and you take little photographs to make a big photograph. It's the same concept, basically, mm -hmm. but now in pottery. So I want to make a larger image out of smaller images. So, so it's, it, your process is an assemblage, right? In yes. most case, it, yep. uh, in this case, and, and we would say in that case. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. in, in almost mm -hmm. all cases, yeah. So basically, like, my negative... A negative shape would be like all of the little crevices that would come out or even like one of them the taller one that I made for um, I did the untitled abstract exhibition a lot of um, customers were saying uh, that you can make it like a fountain and if it pours from the top it could go on to mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. so it's like the mm -hmm. negative space of mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. cup being full but then also like the positive of it being a vase you know right and we could have little <clears throat> creatures that are in the negative spaces yes, yes. right or plants like you <laughs> we were saying earlier so sarah let's talk to you um you are an illustrator and graphic designer and you've brought some work with with you today. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that means to you to be an illustrator and a graphic designer. Um, well, to be to, an illustrator tells a story, basically, mm -hmm. um, through art, and a graphic designer uh, designs things that get printed. So, one of the things I do is, is I freelance. I do graphic design. And um, yes, I, and you're doing you're helping out with Open Studio Hartford, isn't that yep. correct? With some of the mm -hmm. the 25th anniversary collaterals. Yep. Right. Yes. So it will they'll look new and different, or they'll look um, traditional. I don't think they're they're not going to look super crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the most important thing about graphic design is that it needs to be legible. Makes sense. Overall. So, Makes sense. you know, it, it will be, it won't be too unconventional. It'll definitely be, um, it'll look new. It'll, it won't look like last year or the year before, but, uh, but yeah, it'll just it'll have all the information on there. And Excellent. And how did <laughs> you get involved help? with the, with the graphic process of Open Studio Hartford? Did you know Cynthia? Uh, I knew Cynthia. I've been doing Open Studio for, this must be my fourth year okay. doing it. So... Um, I've met Cynthia through this, through the open studio, and um, so she asked me to, to help. So I and, and I hope I did mention that Cynthia is the events coordinator, yes, and she's been involved for quite a long time. And, mm -hmm. and then, well, and then she left and came back. So in the past, right. I think, two or three years, she has really amped it up to, yeah. to the 300 artists and the 20 venues. Um, so... Is it pretty common for an illustrator to be a graphic designer? I think it is. Um, it all depends on, on the artist themselves. Uh, some graphic designers just, they work their 40 hours a week and, and that's their job and that's their art. Um, right. And others are just illustrators and they freelance and do illustration all the time and that's it. Um, but I think it's a pretty easy crossover because there's a lot of um, elements that are the same. You need to know the computer, you need to know uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and all those things um, to be successful at either one of those. Now, the, the images you brought with you mm -hmm. today, uh, tell me a little bit about them. They, I, I, 
on the surface wouldn't have thought that the computer was involved, but now I'm thinking I'm totally wrong. So well, these are these are not computer generated. These are these two are oil paintings, and then um, the one on the end is a pastel. So these are my fine art pieces. Okay. Um, and when I do illustrations, they're also done by hand. It's mainly the graphic design that's done on the computer. Okay. So when you, um, when you, I'm sorry. Do you want to? No, that's okay. when, when you exhibit during Open Studio Weekend, are you going to have your fine art and illustrations and some? Yeah, I, I'll have I'll have some illustrations there, and um, I, I usually will show um, some of the logos that I've done. I do a lot of logos for graphic design, business cards, brochures, right. stuff like that. Um, but I'm working on a new series of hands. I started looking back at my work, my illustrations and stuff that I had been doing, and I noticed that there's hands in all of my work, and I enjoy doing hands. I love doing hands. Wow. And so hands I are decided, not easy. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody tells right. me. But I decided to um, focus on the hands specifically as the main feature instead of having it help to tell the story. Then it, now it, it becomes the story. Um, well, it makes sense. You know, that makes sense for for an artist, for a creative person, because usually we're working with our hands, right? Right. In some capacity. Yeah, and a lot of these pieces that I've done, I don't. Yeah, a lot of these pieces that I've done, like like this one, um, they're all, most of them are um, hands playing an instrument. Oh. So hands interacting right. with other things. Do this you one play I an did, instrument, Sarah? I Well, I play the piano okay. and the guitar, but I, I don't do either of them well. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there's such crossover, right? Is there? Do you find between uh, Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to be all that dexterity in your right. fingers and right. with the hand-eye coordination and right. yeah I enjoyed it but this one um, I created when my fiance and I became engaged Aww. so this is Aww, these wonderful. are our hands together and he's also an artist living with me at open studio uh, at, <laughs> at, art space at art space and will be showing at open oh, and studio he'll be exhibiting as also. well yes do you know, our time is just about over. It goes really, really fast. So I would say <laughs> take a moment and think if there's any one more thing that you want to say either about your work or and or about Open Studio and where you'll be. Is there anything that we want to add? Um, well, I just wanted to say that the piece on the end um, is a, a, a portrait of my dog. So I, I also do pet portraits, Excellent. which are huge around the holidays. Yes, so. that's very true. Good plug <laughs> yes. for pet portraits. Yeah. And I, I will be located in West Hartford on, on New Park Avenue. Yes. And I think there's going to be a number of other artists there too. Yes, so. and last year it was called West Hardisons, and I don't know if they'll, if they'll use that same name, but yes, yes this is my Park. first year. So Your first year. And, and, I'll, and be, I'll be showing pastels, which these are, and uh, paintings, and then smaller, smaller pieces of drawings, and I'll have copies of my book. And book copies, excellent. Thank I'll be know. displaying at uh, the Connecticut Historical Society again. It's my second year there, so, and I'm going to bring some bigger pieces too, so mm -hmm. I'm excited. And that's over on Elizabeth Street, right? Yep, one Elizabeth Street. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'll be over there, too. Nice. So we'll have a great time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for thank joining you. me today. It was great thank fun. You. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll, we'll thank the, um, I'll always thank the uh, camera people and the <laughs> producer. And this, again, this is Art Talks with Joanne. Thanks. Thanks.